Howdy, this is the first video, which will be part of a series of videos dealing with, though not exclusively, the 1964 textbook First Course in Mathematical Logic by Patrick Supps and Shirley Hill. It's an elementary book on propositional logic, some predicate logic, and also has adventures in building some very basic elementary math systems using nothing but the tools of logic. But it's a textbook designed for all ages and abilities. It has a focus on translations, so it's not just a game of, so to speak, manipulating arbitrary symbols. There's actual meat behind these symbols. Now in this video, we'll be covering section 1.1, 1.2, sentences and sentential connectives. I'm the amateur logician. So let's get started. Section 1.1 from the Substance Hill textbook is on sentences. And in propositional logic, in mathematical logic, there are two basic types of sentences. We have atomic sentences and molecular sentences. An atomic sentence is a simple declarative sentence, which is either true or false. That's the key here. It must be either true or false in principle. Or in other words, we might think of this as what's called truth functional. The adjective or the word declarative also indicates this feature of being truth functional. For example, if I say today is Saturday, it's an atomic sentence because it's declaring something to be the case. It's saying today is Saturday. And in principle, it's either true or false. As I record this now, it happens to be true. So it's a good atomic sentence. However, if I ask the question, is today Saturday? It's not declaring anything to be the case. It's not true or false. And so we cannot analyze it in mathematical logic. Or a mere command, if I say watch this video, that's not an atomic sentence because it's not declaring anything to be the case. You can't say true or false to a mere command, nor can you do so with a mere wish or desire. So mathematical logic builds up from simple atomic sentences, and in principle, they must be either true or false, such as today is Saturday. Moreover, if we think about the concept of a function in basic algebra, for example, if we have something like f of x is equal to x squared, we have this idea of an input x and an output f of x. For example, f of 2 is equal to 2 squared, which is equal to 4. We have the input 2 and the output 4. This basic idea kind of mimics what's going on in mathematical logic as it's been developed by people like Gottlob Frege. For example, we can have various atomic sentences and we can combine them to form a molecular sentence. We can think about the truth or falsity of a molecular sentence in terms of the individual values of its atomic sentences. They can be true or false, and if we know those values, we can then determine what the truth is of the molecular sentence. So a molecular sentence just builds up from atomic sentences. We might think of it as a combination of two or more atomic sentences, or to be uh, more accurate here, it could just be one atomic sentence but with the so-called sentential connective of not. For example, it's not the case that today is Saturday. So today is Saturday is an atomic sentence. And then with the not, altogether we have formed a molecular sentence. Or think of this, today is Saturday. That's an atomic sentence. It is cold outside is another atomic sentence. It's an atomic sentence because it's declaring something to be the case, and it's either true or false. But we can combine them together through the so-called and sentential connective. So we have this big molecular sentence. What would be the truth or falsity of a molecular sentence? We can just appeal to our intuition here. If this sentence, this atomic sentence is true, today is Saturday, and if this individual atomic sentence, it is cold outside, is true, then the entire molecular sentence must be true with this and sentential connective. So the basic idea here is that in mathematical logic, we have sentences that declare something to be the case. They must be true or false. And these atomic sentences can build up to form 
molecular sentences. These molecular sentences are formed via sentential connectives. And that's the next section, 1.2. So let's think a little bit about sentential connectives. This is section 1.2. These are just logical operators that make molecular sentences from atomic sentences. For example, we have the sentential connective and. We have the sentential connective or. We have the sentential connective not. We have the sentential connective if then. There's also another sentential connective not listed here. That's the if and only if, although in a future section, in a future video, we'll cover that one. I suppose the most unique sentential connective listed here is actually the not, which we might call the negation. It's also called the complement. It's because it doesn't connect atomic sentences. The not only attaches itself, so to speak, to a single sentence. For example, not this sentence, whatever that sentence happens to be. It can be very short and simple, or it can be very long and complex. It doesn't matter. Moreover, that sentence might be atomic or it might be molecular. Again, it doesn't matter. The not simply denies that sentence. It tells us that sentence is not the case. So the not attaches itself to one single sentence. On the other hand, the and, the or, the if then obviously connect two distinct sentences. For example, this sentence and this sentence, this sentence or this sentence. If this sentence is the case, then this sentence is the case. There's a lot more to be said for these sentential connectives, and we'll do that as we go on. For now, I'll just note a few things. I think the most confusing of the sentential connectives is actually the if then, it's the conditional. For example, if x is the case, then y is the case. And as we'll find out, x we call the antecedent, and y we call the consequent. And the most important thing in my mind to understand about conditionals is the distinction between sufficient and necessary conditions. For example, we'll say that x, the antecedent, is sufficient for y the consequent. That is, if x is the case, then y will be the case. But it's not necessarily necessary. So x is not necessary for y. Or in other words, other things might bring about y or cause y. And we'll cover that later on. Right now, I want to talk a little bit about symbols. Now this is mathematical logic, so we will use symbols to represent the and, the or, the not, the if then. Now, unlike basic arithmetic, where everyone agrees to the basic symbols, for example, if you see a plus sign, you know that's just addition, or a minus sign is subtraction, right? But different textbooks and logic use different symbols. Okay, so for the and, in the Substance Hill textbook, they use the ampersand. And because I find that a little bit difficult to write on a touchscreen, I'll probably use the wedge most of the time. So that represents and. The sentential connective. The or we use a descending wedge. It looks like a V. The textbook also uses that. The not we can use the tilde, which is that squiggly line you find on the keyboard. But also you can see for not, I'm not sure what the name of this is. It might not even have a name, but in any case it's just a horizontal line and then we have it going down at a right angle. So that's not. And the if then is an arrow. Different textbooks might use a different symbol. So for example, if x, then y. So x, arrow, y. In a nutshell, propositional logic is about the relation between various sentences. And those relations come about via these sentential connectives. The and, the or, the not, the if, then, the if and only if. That, in a nutshell, is what propositional logic is about. We have sentential connectives. We can relate various atomic sentences to build molecular sentences. We can think about the logical relations between sentences with these various operators, with these various sentential connectives. While it's a cliche to say that mathematics is not a spectator sport, it is nevertheless a true cliche. To get good at logic requires practice. It requires applying the tools of logic on a regular basis. Now my goal for this series of videos is to go through some of the problems, although certainly not all of them, from the Substance Hill textbook, and you are invited to join me. We'll start with exercise 1a from pages 3 to 4. These problems, these exercises, 
are very straightforward, very simple, very easy. But obviously, as we progress through the textbook, things will get a little bit more challenging, a little bit more interesting. But still, it's good to go through these just to make sure we understand what an atomic sentence is, what a molecular sentence is. Let's make sure we can spot various sentential connectives, etc. The instructions tell us to write an A for each sentence that is an atomic sentence and an M for each sentence that is a molecular sentence. For each molecular sentence, write the sentential connective used. And just to review, we have various sentential connectives, such as the AND connective. We have the OR connective. We have the NOT connective. We have the IF-THEN connective. So if a sentence contains one of those key words, there's a good chance it's a molecular sentence. The only thing I don't like about this exercise is that I wish it included sentences that were neither molecular nor atomic. For example, you can have a non-declarative sentence. You can have a question. You can have a command. And those can't be analyzed in mathematical logic. But in any case, let's look at number one and do some of these problems. So we have lunch will be at exactly noon today. It is declaring something to be the case, so we can analyze it in mathematical logic. However, there's no and or not if then, so it's definitely just an atomic sentence. And likewise for number two, the big black bear lumbered lazily down the road. It's declaring something to be the case, so in principle, it could be true, it could be false. There's no and, there's no or, there's no not, there's no if then, it's just atomic. But then if we look at number three, sentence three, we have that music is very soft or the door is closed. So obviously the or is a giveaway. It's a sentential connective. The or is also called a disjunction. So we have a molecular sentence, but embedded within that molecular sentence are two atomic sentences, namely that music is very soft. And then the other atomic sentence embedded within that molecular sentence is the door is closed. So we have this, this or molecular sentence. Skipping down, let's go to number five. He called for his pipe and he called for his bowl. So obviously we have this and sentential connective. So it's a molecular sentence. And embedded within that molecular sentence, we have two atomic sentences. He called for his pipe called for his bowl. Skipping down to number seven, we have, if Bob is a good player, then he will be on the school team. So once again, the dead giveaway is just the if, then, sentential connective. So we have a conditional, so it's a molecular sentence. And embedded within that molecular sentence are two atomic sentences. Those two atomic sentences compose that molecular sentence. So we have Bob's a good player. He will be on the school team. Let's skip down again to number 10, sentence 10. Kittens do not usually wear mittens. We have that not sentential connective, just a dead giveaway. But embedded within that molecular sentence is a single atomic sentence, namely kittens do usually wear mittens. So we have this molecular sentence. We have a denial of that single atomic sentence. So this stuff is pretty straightforward. Finally, before concluding this video, before concluding this section, let's take a look at part B of exercise one, where to make four molecular sentences by using one or two of the atomic sentences listed below together with a sentential connective. This is very straightforward. We can relate one sentence with another through a sentential connective, such as the and, the or, the if then. For example, sentence one, the wind blows very hard. If we think of that sentence as W, in other words, W represents or stands for the content, the wind blows very hard, we can make a molecular sentence, this time with the not connective. We can just say not W. In other words, it is not the case that the wind blows very hard. 
And if we think of Paul should be able to win easily as P, we can relate the W, the P, through the AND, the OR, the IF THEN. For example, W and P. We have a so-called conjunction. We have the AND sentential connective. The wind blows very hard and Paul should be able to win easily. We can say W or P. We have a disjunction. The sentential connective is OR. The wind blows very hard or Paul should be able to win easily. We can have IF, W, then P. We have a conditional. We have a sentential connective, if, then. If the wind blows very hard, then Paul should be able to win easily. We can match and choose here in any way we like. If we say sentence 6 is J, we can say if J, then W, or J and W, and so on and so forth. I want to thank you for watching. Now this is the very first video in a series of videos to come on the Substance Hill textbook, First Course in Mathematical Logic. Now up next, we will cover section 1.3, the form of molecular sentences. And I'll see you soon.